Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today may be a total failure. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So we're back up here on Short Mountain today. This is the first time I've been up here in many months. Uh, if you remember from the last video, there was probably uh, four or five inches of ice uh, that had completely covered this area. So quite a different scene today. Now, I mentioned in my opening statement that this may be a complete failure. And I've kind of set myself up that way. Some of it intentional, some of it not intentional. First of all, notice that I'm not in my Jeep. My Jeep actually went down yesterday and I'm uh, working to get that repaired. So I'm in the wife's Jeep. Uh, and that's kind of got me a bit outside of my comfort zone. That's not necessarily a bad thing though. I think we should all try to step outside of our comfort zone from time to time to make sure that uh, we kind of can adapt and overcome the situation. Now, in addition to not being in my vehicle where I'm used to having all of my extra bits and bobs scattered about, I'm also bringing along two new radios today. Uh, first of all, I've got the Yezu FT5DR, brand new. So I've got just a couple of repeaters plugged into this. And I want to kind of see how the APRS functions from up here on top of the mountain. In addition to the Yezu FT5, I've also got the new ICOM 705. And we're going to be putting it through its paces today. I've got several things that I want to test out. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to be working with a group out of East Tennessee that's uh, roughly 90 to 100 miles away from us. I'd like to be able to work them using the 705 with 10 watts and do that over 2 meter FM. We may also play with some 2 meter single sideband. In addition to doing the voice contacts, of course, I want to fire up my Raspberry Pi and I want to see if I can make a Winlink connection over 2 meter, and then we may go ahead and jump over to some of the HF stuff as well. So, should be a fun day. It's always exciting just to get out uh, on a beautiful day like this as we're coming into fall here in Tennessee and just play some radio for the day. Stick around, and let's see what we can make happen. So here's a quick tip for you. If you've got an antenna that uh, maybe has one style of connector or the other on it uh, that you take out on a regular basis, make sure you keep adapters with that antenna so that when you get out into the field, you've got what you want. For instance, the elk antenna, the uh, elk log periodic that I just mounted to the top of this mast has an SO239 connector. I typically am using coax that has B and C connectors on it. In this kit, I've got an adapter that will adapt me from SO239 over to B and C that I always keep with that antenna. And I also keep a barrel connector in here so that I can put the two pieces of coax together. It may save you one day in the field if you just put those with the antenna. So on the Raspberry Pi, I want to show you guys the way I use that packet search tool when I'm in the field. Now, I am using my Mac today to connect to the Raspberry Pi so that I've got the screen capture software that I need. So on the Raspberry Pi, the first thing you want to do is come over to Ham Radio and click on Packet Search. That's going to open up this box here, and I'm going to do a distance search. And I'm going to search for 100 kilometers and hit return. And it's going to give me this list here. Now, we can't really pay attention to the distances or the uh, directions here uh, in this list because this list was downloaded using my home grid square. And you have to understand that about the way 
the downloaded gateway list works with Pat Winlink. Everything is based on the grid square you used when you downloaded the list. So we can't really rely on any of that information. In fact, I think this is the gateway that I want to try to connect to first, W4WTN. You'll notice it says it's 99 kilometers away. I really don't believe that to be the case. But it does ask me if I want to save this list to the desktop, and I'm going to say yes just to make it a little bit easier to reference. So you will see that sitting over here on the desktop. We'll right-click on that and click Text Editor. And that'll bring up that list that I just had. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to open the grid calc uh, software. So I'm going to choose option six out of packet search. And that will open up this list here. Now it's automatically pulling my grid. Remember I'm using the 705 with a built-in GPS. So it's pulling that information direct from the GPS and bringing it into this piece of software. So the next thing I need to give it is the grid square of the station that I want to contact. Looking at this list right up here, that's gonna be Echo Mike 76 India Bravo. So Echo Mike 76 India Bravo. And I'm going to hit calculate. Now, if we look at this, that is only 39 miles away from my current grid square, not the, our, um, yeah, 39 miles or 64 kilometers, not the 99 kilometers that it shows uh, from my original PAT menu uh, gateway list. So that's kind of one of the reasons I like to use this grid calculator. And you'll see here it goes ahead and gives me the degrees right here. 69 degrees is where I need to be pointing my antenna. Uh, since I'm using a directional antenna this morning. So we're going to just kind of leave that sitting over here and let's go ahead and get that antenna aimed. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've got the Compass app open on my phone and I'm just searching for that 69 degrees. So it looks like roughly it's that direction and then we'll take the antenna and just spin it so it is pointing the appropriate direction. And we'll kind of back up and look at that. And let's see. Yep, that looks pretty close. So let's go ahead and try to make that connection. Okay, back on the Raspberry Pi, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Pat Menu. Uh, I don't believe I have that station in my gateway list. So first I'm going to go to Find Winley Gateways, search for a gateway. I'm gonna choose two meter, 70 centimeter and hit search. And we should see that station come up, W4WTN-10. So let's go ahead and highlight that and then just click Add the Alias. We'll get the uh, alert box that it has been added. I'm just going to go ahead and move back out to the main gateway, or I'm sorry, the main uh, PAT menu page and go ahead and click Start Packet Modem. This goes ahead and fires up everything that I need for uh, a packet connection. So I get uh, Direwolf, I get um, Rig Control, and I'm going to get Kiss Attach all active. I'll get an alert that tells me uh, everything has started and then the window is going to come up. So now if we come up to Action and Connect, and then we select our alias uh, W4WTN, all right, looks like 145050. You'll see that uh, FL Rig has also moved, uh, indicating our, it's showing the new frequency that we moved to. And then we'll go ahead and try to click the connect button and see if we can get this connection rolling here. There we go, you can hear that that connection has started. So we'll let this work for a few minutes and we should be able to download all of our Winlink messages. All right, I missed the call sign, but I did uh, get, uh, I was able to copy you without any trouble whatsoever. Give me that call one more time. <laughs> Copy, Paul. I thought that was you, but I wasn't positive. Uh, a little bit of white noise in there with you. Uh, how's the signal on your side? Uh, negative. I did not set up for HF today, at least not so far. Uh, I've just got the one fiberglass masked up with that log, uh, uh, log periodic by Elk sitting on top of it. 
and I don't know if you heard my my conversation with Kenny a second ago having a lot of noise issues I'm not sure right now if it's coming out of the Raspberry Pi or uh, that buddy pole power mini but it was definitely uh, prohibiting uh, me being able to hear you guys earlier this morning once I disconnected everything uh, I'm able to copy all of you guys KM4 BBV, I have you uh, a little bit better actually than I had Paul just a second ago. Not sure what kind of setup you're running uh, for an antenna or how much power, but uh, definitely good copy on you this morning. Yeah, Roger that. Uh, I can't remember the other video where we talked. Uh, I do have a Hardy's Cup uh, still sitting there. <laughs> uh, I read you 5 and 9. Uh, when you were talking to Paul, you were in and out a little bit. A lot of white noise. I don't know if... Uh, Maybe uh, you were turning directional or uh, moving stuff to catch Paul. I'm running high power 50 watts on my mobile. <coughs> and uh, the same, same setup as I had last time and still reading you beautifully over. On this end this time, I have a Hardy's cup just over my left shoulder that I'm looking at. Yeah, Roger that. Uh, we heard you all morning. As a matter of fact, you were, you were really uh, <coughs> glaring as we were coming up there. I think it was... Uh, well, that's the thing. I hit it out with... Setup. I've got uh, two new radios with me, the IC705 by ICOM, and i got a Gizu FT5D with me uh, as well this morning. And uh, running the same Raspberry Pi and... Uh, uh, solar charge controller that I've run in the past, I've never noticed this much noise on them, and I don't know if this radio is a little extra sensitive to it or what, but once I disconnected that and gave you guys another call, I was able to... Uh, hear you without uh, any trouble so uh, that's all part of the funds experimenting and uh, figuring out why things aren't working when uh, things go sideways on you and a lot of lessons learned today uh, a lot of things i'm going to have to sort through with this new radio uh, i was able to accomplish most of what i wanted to accomplish so we made some wind link contacts uh, we made some uh, simplex contacts on 5.2 uh, made contact with those guys finally over in East Tennessee uh, for just the radio that was working beautifully I was running just 5 watts uh, part of the time and 10 watts the other part of the time with the 705 and had great communications with those guys over in East Tennessee I got to get all this stuff tore down and packed up and get back to the house we'll catch you guys on the next video until then 7-3